what's up YouTube look familiar yo what's up YouTube heathens here um, I am officially back in my truck um, purpose of this video though is I am going to review my loaner truck which was a 2019 International um, I believe it's the A26 whatever they want to call that damn thing um, so I only had it for two weeks the first week I was out on the road with a PSD student and it was absolutely horrible um, the truck wouldn't idle above 80 shoot it wouldn't even idle above 90 sometimes um, the APU was just all jacked up wouldn't work half the time uh, it worked for one hour and then cut off because of a uh, fuse blown um, so it was definitely a very rough week so with that being said I got routed back in and spent a week on the pad and tested my student out um, but for the most part um, my score out of 10 is going to be a three or a four that's it um, there's a couple things that it has going for itself and then just absolutely horrible things um, first off the transmission was only a 10 speed which if you're gonna do an auto shift you gotta have more than 10 speeds because it just it's gonna suck down fuel that's why if you ever notice if you're in an international and you can't seem to get above nine miles a gallon sometimes that's because that's a 10 speed um, once you get up in the 12 speed range you get a little bit more better fuel mileage like the Peterbilt or even better with the Freightliner um, but the reason why I gave it a four or a three um, I, I'd say about I eh, will go ahead and give it a four four out of ten a um, couple things I did like was the storage it definitely had a lot of storage um, especially the storage under the top bunk one on each side has lots of space um, if I was long term in that thing I'd probably use that for like canned food and stuff like that um, shelf life uh, food um, something I don't need a microwave for or a fridge for um, that'd be a great spot because it's really sturdy and has a really big lip so things won't fall out when you turn or anything like that then you got one on each side um, the cabinets were pretty big um, the one that goes above the fridge was pretty nice and the one on the driver's side behind the seat I don't know what their thinking was with that one but putting the step there and having the inside of that still open behind the step just made no sense I mean the step was like literally in the way the whole time um, but they have a rack in there so you can hang clothes um, me personally I don't hang my clothes uh, they're too big for that um and the one above the, the top of that where the step is at it was pretty nice that's where i put my cpap um did not move it was real sturdy um it has a rubber grip there which was really nice um so going down the road i didn't have to put my cpap away or put it on the bed like some people do with freightliner um or even peterbilt um, fortunately my cpap has grips underneath the um CPAP so it, it doesn't even move even in the Peterbilt so that was pretty nice um, the under storage underneath the bed would be perfect for if you have an animal like a cat uh, put the litter box underneath there that would be out of the way uh, for the cat and everything or me personally I don't I don't have pets that go on my truck so I would probably use that for like you know uh, big things of water uh, or water jugs um, so that's a great space right there that can be utilized don't 
don't want to shove small things in there because then, then you're getting on your hands and knees trying to retrieve the damn thing or lifting up the bed. Um, and then there was a cabinet above the uh, on the driver's side, which was pretty nice. It was pretty big, great for maybe folding up your clothes, putting in there. Um, the one thing storage-wise that I really liked was above the driver's seat and the passenger side had lots of space to put things um, but the biggest thing I loved the most was the dash the dash had crevices that you can like you know put your phone in so you don't have to have anything on the windshield like I have a phone mount on my windshield and that's what I use to do these videos um, that was really nice uh, USB plug-ins instead of just the standard 12 volt um, was pretty nice as well it definitely opened up some spots to use uh, other than that I mean I did not like the way they had the load bar in the dead center that was kind of inconvenient um, always having to climb up there and everything uh, let's see the death fill was pretty nice I mean on the Peterbilt, it's off to the side, so you have to like hold the nozzle in to make sure it doesn't, you know, pull itself out. But on on the International, it's like on the top side of the step, so it's like real easy just to, you know, be there and watch it. Uh, didn't really pull back on the death pump, you know, because those things will wind itself up real quick for some god awful reason. Um, they should really think about putting a stopper on that, you know, but. Hey, who am I? I'm just a trucker, right? So, um, but I wish I would have got pictures, um, of the insides. I forgot to get those, um, because unfortunately, when I came back for the week pad time for my student, the truck went down with a air valve issue. Um, basically, the, with the trailer brake set, and not even hooked up to a trailer, just rolling down bobtail. Whenever you hit the brakes, uh, air will shoot through the uh, service line in the back, which indicates I have an open valve or a stuck valve, um, which that ended up being the case. Mm, so it sat at International for almost a week because they had to order that part in. Um, that was really inconvenient, but we were able to snag the pad truck for my student and he still aced it, so that's great. Um, best of luck to him. So, uh, yeah, I mean, other than the, uh, the color of white, I mean, you, you would never catch me buying one of those or leasing one of those. Um, quite frankly, I think Prime either needs to get rid of them or drop a Cummins in them. Um, putting a Cummins in there would probably definitely change my mind a little bit about them. Uh, other than that, I mean, they're just what exactly their name stands for. The 13 letter shit spreader. So, but it is what it is. Sorry for, you know, oh, another thing that damn thing would do. Whenever you go into reverse, you either go at 50 miles an hour or you don't go at all. I'm like, you know, this, this is ridiculous. Trying to get into really, really tight spots with that damn thing was like damn near impossible. Um, did not like that. Um, all that causes is, you know, hitting docks really hard. Uh, hopefully not hitting other trucks. It's just... I don't know, they need either bump up the torque a little bit so that, you know, it can move on its own like Freightliner and Peterbilt does. Um, other than that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel for you guys out there that have to get stuck with that thing. Some people like them, go for them. Um, that's their choice, but four out of 10 is my score. It's not Heathens approved. Um, the next video that I'm going to be coming out with, uh, getting close to 10 minutes here, is uh, I'm going to talk about the process of what happened with my truck. So until then, 
Heathens was here, and I'm out.